Saud, Minister for Foreign and Affairs of Saudi Arabia. In the name of God, the merciful, the compassionate. President of the United Nations General Assembly, ladies and gentlemen, may the peace of God and the blessing of God be upon you. Please allow me to congratulate, first of all, His Excellency Mr. Philemon Yang upon his election to head up the 79th session of the UN General Assembly. We also congratulate Mr. Dennis Francis for the efforts that he made during the previous session. I also wish to seize this opportunity to thank the United Nations Secretary General, Mr. Antonio Guterres, for the tireless efforts that he's making in order to achieve the goals and aspirations of the UN Charter. President, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, since we participated in the creation of this organisation, has been striving to make efforts to make the promises of the UN Charter an absolute reality, establishing the respect for international law, achieving international peace and security, and supporting channels for international multilateral actions in many different areas. In this regard, the Kingdom participated in the drafting of the Pact for the Future that was agreed on by the leaders of the world this week. We believe that this pact and the summit for the future in general is an opportunity to renew our collective principles to strengthen cooperation to achieve peace and security and sustainable development for future generations. In the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, we are seeking to strengthen the role of international financial institutions to ensure an economic recovery. President, the world is seeing a high pace of crises and unfortunately we are just looking at managing these crises rather than finding concrete solutions. This is a situation of laxism in international efforts and also a situation of selectivity in the application of international law and international humanitarian law which has led to an exacerbation of violence and conflicts and is threatening the principles of the UN Charter and undermining common actions to find peaceful solutions. Peaceful solutions that will enable us to spare the lives of civilians and to put an end to fighting and ensure peace and international and regional development. In this context of tensions between countries, we wish to warn against political polarisation. We need to open up dialogue and strengthen dialogue and cooperation between states, enabling us to strengthen international peace and security. In this regard, we categorically reject all crimes perpetrated by Israel against the kindred Palestinian people. The most recent crimes committed against civilians, defenceless civilians, is just one chapter in the story of suffering by this brother people who have been suffering for decades now. These barbaric Israeli practices that started last year has cost the lives of tens of thousands of Palestinian civilians, in particular women, women and children. We are seeing bombing, murder and destruction. This is a real humanitarian catastrophe and it is continuing to get worse. It is necessary to halt this aggression. For this reason, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia hosted the Joint Arab Israeli summit in November 2023. We saw the participation of heads of state and government of member countries of the Arab League and the Organization for Islamic Cooperation. We work to adopt resolutions and decisions that reflect the will of Arab and Muslim people and to stop the bloodshed, to ensure unhindered humanitarian access and to realize the legitimate demands of the Palestinian people, in particular the creation of an independent state. The ministerial committee tasked by this summit to engage in visits uh, has called upon the international community to put an end to Israeli aggression and protect civilians. That's why we welcome the adoption by the General Assembly on the 10th of May 2024 of a resolution that states that the State of Palestine fulfills all the conditions to become a fully-fledged member state of our organisation and we welcome the decision of Norway, Spain, Ireland, Slovenia and Armenia who have recognised the brother country of Palestine. We call upon other states to bilaterally recognise the state of Palestine and to act together in order to recognise the state of Palestine as an independent state. That's why we announced with our partners and 
ministerial committees with Norway and the European Union, we have announced the creation of a coalition to promote the two-state solution. We call upon all states to join us in this initiative. Mr. President, we have provided more than five billion American dollars in aid to the kindred Palestinian people since the um, bombing of the Gaza uh, Strip with the um, King Salman project. We have committed to even more, uh, several millions of dollars in humanitarian aid, and we are working with many different international and UN humanitarian aid agencies to bring in humanitarian projects to the tune of $106 billion. We are also working with UNRWA to provide services, to provide food, medications and meet other needs of the brother Palestinian people. The support provided by the Kingdom to UNRWA has uh, gone above $1 billion. We welcome the advisory opinion of the International Court of Justice regarding Israeli practices in occupied Palestinian territories that has um, confirmed the illegal nature of Israeli presence in occupied Palestinian territories for now 75 years. It's essential to find a fair solution to the Palestinian crisis based on resolutions of international equality and enabling the Palestinian people to establish an independent state with pre-1967 borders with East Jerusalem as its capital. The prevalence of impunity, the lack of respect of legal obligations is encouraging Israel to continue its escalation. This escalation will have no positive impact on any party at all. It also risks having negative repercussions for the entire region. That's why we affirm the fact that it is necessary to preserve the stabi stability of Lebanon and to respect its sovereignty in line with international law and in line with relevant UN Security Council resolutions. We are aligning with international efforts to bring in an immediate ceasefire and to find a lasting diplomatic solution. We call upon all parties to show wisdom and to show restraint in order to avoid a true war from breaking out in the region. Mr. President, the Kingdom has taken key measures in order to ensure appeasement and development in our region. We have concluded an agreement with Iran to restore our diplomatic relations based on the respect of sovereignty and non-interference in internal affairs, also on the respect of the UN Charter working with the Organization for Islamic Cooperation also to establish peace and security in our region. We hope that Iran will cooperate with the international community, in particular vis-a-vis -vis its nuclear program and its ballistic missile program. We have also resumed relations with the Syrian Arab Republic to strengthen, strengthen our cooperation on common issues because we are convinced that finding a solution to this crisis will enable us to entrench peace and stability in our region. We also reaffirm the need to preserve the security of Syria, its stability and the integrity of its territory. Furthermore, in Yemen, we are supporting all efforts to find a solution to this crisis and to appease the human suffering of the brother Yemeni people. It's essential to find political solutions to reinstall peace and stability in the region. We reiterate our initiative that seeks to find a just and lasting solution. When it comes to the situation in the Red Sea, this is a situation that is undermining security of shipping routes. And in response to that, we need to show a sense of wisdom and support international efforts to establish peace and stability in that area. In Sudan, we reaffirm our staunch position to preserve peace and stability in Sudan and to strengthen the state and its institutions and avoid it breaking down. We, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, hosted the Sudanese peace talks in Jeddah to this end. We call to appease the situation, put an end to military operations and to provide humanitarian aid. We are working to continue the Jeddah talks uh, engaging in Jeddah Talks 3, the third round. In terms of peace and uh, stability in Afghanistan, Afghanistan cannot uh, be left by the wayside of its region and the international community 
uh, or be a prey to terrorists. That's why it's necessary to put an end to the humanitarian and security situation in Afghanistan that is providing fertile ground to different groups and militias to continue their activities. Now, moving on to the Russian-Ukrainian crisis, we must put an end to this crisis and contain its repercussions. His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince, may God protect him, is continuing to work to this end, and we have announced the freeing of several prisoners of different nationalities. We hosted a meeting of different officials from different countries with the participation of several different states and international organisations. We stand ready to continue our mediation efforts between the parties to the conflict. President, drawing on our Vision 2030, we aspire to fulfil the needs of future generations to empower women and youth and to build bridges with the world. Through our development approach we aspire to achieve global development focusing on people preserving their rights, their dignity and allowing them to achieve their aspirations. Mr President, on the energy front we are working to achieve energy security and to guarantee access to energy at reasonable prices and to mitigate the effects of climate change. We seek to ensure stability in international markets, the international oil markets, and to guarantee access to this energy and guarantee security in the supply chains in order to in ensure a prosperous international economy. We are also fighting against climate change in particular by adopting a holistic approach to the energy transition. In that regard, we seek to respect the UNFCCC and the Paris Agreement, making the most of all the techniques we have available to us in order to limit our greenhouse gas emissions. The Kingdom of Saudi Arabia is one of the best placed countries according to carbon and methane density emissions and we are working to set up a trans carbon transfer and storage facility in the city of Al Jubaira this has the capacity to store 9,000 tonnes um, within a few years and 44,000 tonnes by 2030. We are working with the international community, Mr President, to fight climate change and that's why in the summit between Saudi Arabia and Africa we announced a participation of $50 billion to support these efforts. We have also launched initiatives such as the Green Saudi Arabia Initiative, the Green Middle East Initiative, and we are also investing in techniques to reduce carbon density and to strengthen electricity and green hydrogen production. The Kingdom furthermore supports projects to optimise the consumption of energy and to preserve uh, sea life and water. That's why we celebrated the International Environment Day in 2024 and we will soon be hosting the COP16 of the United Nations Convention Against Desertification, which is reaffirming our commitment to preserve the future and fight against desertification. We also intend to host the International Water Forum in 2027. The Crown Prince, may God protect him, announced the creation of an international organisation for water resources last September to fight against the challenges we face when it comes to water resources. Mr President, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia is working to 
create a world free of nuclear weapons. For this reason, we call upon all states to preserve the non-proliferation regime while protecting the rights of states to use nuclear energy for peaceful purposes. We support efforts being made to fight against terrorism, and it's necessary to bolster our joint actions by continuing cooperation with our international partners in order to fight against this threat. It's necessary to make more efforts to fight against the campaigns being launched by terrorist groups. It's further necessary to continue our work to fight against the financing of terrorism. Mr. President, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia was chosen to host the 2030 Global uh, Exposition. This exposition is allowing us to focus on the Sustainable Development Goals. This is an event that uh, is an opportunity to find political solutions when it comes to sustainability and also to honour our commitments to developing countries. By way of conclusion, we hope that the efforts being made will enable us to establish a common principle with mutual respect to build a better future for the whole of humanity. And may the peace and blessing of God be upon you. For foreign affairs of Saudi Arabia. I now give the floor to His Excellency Mulambu Amakuni Ayambe, Minister for Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation of Zambia. Your Excellency, Philemon Yang, President of the 79th Session of the United Nations General Assembly, the Secretary General of the United Nations, Antonio Guterres, distinguished heads of state and government, honorable ministers, heads of intergovernmental organizations, excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I congratulate you, Your Excellency, on assumption of the presidency of the 79th session of the United Nations General Assembly and assure you of Zambia's cooperation during your tenure. We extend Zambia's sincere gratitude to His Excellency, Mr. Dennis Francis, for the exemplary work exhibited during the 78th session. Mr. President, the theme for this session Quote, leaving no one behind, acting together for the advancement of peace, sustainable development, and human dignity for present and future generations, close quote, presents an opportunity for us to re-examine our priorities, redefine our mission, and sharpen our vision as we approach the 80th anniversary of the United Nations. Zambia, therefore joins the UN Secretary General in congratulating member states for successfully adopting, adopting beg pardon, the Pact for the Future, which includes the G Digital Global Compact and the Declaration on Future Generations. We further appreciate the work of Namibia and Germany in co-facilitating this process. It is our hope that the implementation of the Pact for the Future will address the multiple crises facing the world today. Mr. President, Zambia firmly believes that multi multilateralism is the only viable approach to solving regional and international challenges. In this regard, 